Hey everybody, welcome to Tech Uploaded. I'm Chris and today I'm taking a look at the all new Amazon Fire TV. What exactly is a Fire TV? Well, it's Amazon's answer to the Roku box, the Apple TV, the Google Chromecast, and the slew of other devices out there meant to stream content to your television. However, at $99, it also falls into the same price point as the highest end Roku box and the Apple TV. So is it worth that premium price point? Well, let's take a look at some of the features of this device and then hook it up to a television and do a test and find out firsthand just what you get from the Amazon Fire TV. Well, looking at the box, it's clear that Amazon wants you to know that not only will this device stream movies and television content, but it will also allow you to play games. There is an optional controller actually available for this that will allow you to play a plethora of games that Amazon is making available at the time of release. And of course, Amazon's touting that this is even better with the Kindle Fire HDX. It says send 1080p HD video from your Fire HDX to your TV. See trivia plus actor and character details with X-Ray. Powered by IMDB. A quick rundown of the hardware features. Amazon says that this includes a remote control with voice search, high definition picture up to 1080p, connect via dual band, dual antenna, wireless, or plug in directly with Ethernet with support up to 7.1 Dolby Digital Plus surround, optical audio, and HDMI outputs. And this features a quad core 1.7 gigahertz processor, which it says is for great gaming performance. In the box, you get the Amazon Fire TV player, the remote, two AAA batteries, and a power adapter. However, you will have to supply your own HDMI cable, and you'll need an HDTV as well as high-speed internet. The back of the Fire TV includes a USB port, Ethernet, optical audio, HDMI, and then, of course, a plug-in for your power. It's a very simple design, as you can see, and I think that's what Amazon was going for. It has this matte finish on the top with a very, very glossy edge that I already have fingerprints all over, but it also has some good weight and a nice, soft bottom to hold it in place. The remote control is very simple with your microphone button at the top and then a little dial or wheel here. I'm not really sure what that does quite yet. And then all of the buttons that you'll need for play, forward, back, home, menu, and the usual complement that you find on these kind of devices. All right, it's time to take this and hook it up to the television in my bedroom where we'll be replacing a first-gen Roku box that has just gotten dog slow. So, time to hook this up. All right, so here is the setup. I've got my TV on top of the stand, which you'll see in a minute, and then my Xbox 360 that I use as a media center exclusively for my home theater PC, a couple of Audio Engine A2 Plus speakers, and then of course, left of the Xbox 360 is the Amazon Fire TV. So let's boot this thing up. All right, so we are at the Amazon Fire TV start menu. And as soon as you plug this thing in, this is what you get. There's gonna be a little bit of flicker, I apologize for that. This is an older Plasma 720p set, so you can see the refresh rate is getting caught on camera there. So it says, Press play pause. Downloading the latest software. Now I am in through ethernet, so hopefully it uh, sees the connection, which it looks like it did since it's powering itself off. Now remember everybody, this is my first time booting this up, so I have no idea what to expect, just as much as anybody else. All right, Amazon Fire TV booting up. It's got its update, seems happy. All right. We want to make sure that you get the most out of your new streaming media player. That is loud. So we're going to take a quick tour together. All right. So after sitting through that a few minute long video, actually, here we go. So now we're in the official setup. So you can either enable or disable the parental controls. And you are at the home screen. No configurations or anything really needed, it looks like. So here it is. Um, let's take a look. All right, so keeping in mind that this is almost a day one release of this product, I would be really surprised if I didn't run into some kind of bug or slowdown or issue here. So let's make the very first thing settings. Now, I'm probably gonna need to go in and enter in all of my account information. No, look at that. It knows who I am already. Because I purchased this with my Amazon account, it has already synced that. Second screen, don't have that. Applications, don't care. Controls, don't care. Controller, don't care. System, what's in system? Got screen savers, network knows it's wired. Quiet time off, blah, 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 blah. Time zone, see if that's right. Eastern daylight time, 8.09, that is correct. All right, 
So let's get back out of there. Photos, get the cloud drive for iOS or Android, an Amazon cloud drive app. So apparently if you have anything in your Amazon cloud drive and it's photos, it'll show up there. Here's the fun part. Now you've got all the different apps that you can do. You know, Showtime, ESPN Watch, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Hulu Plus, Crackle, Netflix. Obviously you're gonna want that one. Bloomberg, Vivo, and Vimeo. So let's get started. Let's do a Netflix. So I've got that download queued. Download queued. That was very quick. And we'll do Pandora. See how quick that, that was instantaneous. All right, so let's get out of here. One of the things that I've noticed people griping about with this box is it does not include HBO. That is not an app that you can get on it at the moment. So know that if you are an HBO subscriber, you're not gonna be able to use the online access. All right, so movies and TV, popular list. Spotlights, all right, categories, all right, now we have games. So here is my game library, obviously nothing in there, Fire TV Essentials, and then Controller Enabled Favorites. Now there is the controller that you can get. They push that pretty hard right up front. Multiplayer games, family night games, puzzle games, lots and lots of games. So let's see what's under Fire TV Essentials. So here you go, here's your selection, all different kinds of stuff here, Zen Pinball, uh, what do we got here? I don't even know what that is. Badland, Hill Climb Racing, Despicable Me, Minion Rush, Riptide, and Monsters University. So if you wanted to do a game, you can see that uh, it, the game is free, it's normally $2.99, it's marked down, so you know what? It's free, let's do it. It has queued that. Uh, you can go down to the game details and it does describe a little bit about the game. It has the reviews, spectacular game graphics and action with IAPs built in. Really funny, almost perfect. So here you can click through all of the reviews. One little gripe I would have is if you're sitting really far away from your TV like I am in bed, you better have really good vision if you wanna read those reviews. Similar, not two. Okay, so figures out if you like that game, you might like some other games. Not exactly a huge collection. Uh, you can go into the game Spotlight. They do have Minecraft, Walking Dead, Asphalt Airborne 8, Riptide G2, which I'm downloading, Game of Life, Monsters, Buddy and Me. Oh, look at Buddy and Me. He looks cool. Yeah. Oh, and then look at this. You can look at screenshots. Everything is really pretty snappy here. And I've got a couple of downloads running in the background. So, you know, that's not too bad. But uh, Buddy and Me looks like he's a controller friendly game. And then the one thing I did notice is uh, it looks like there's actually a video. So if you want to check out a video, you can watch that. Hey, that must be Buddy. All right, that's pretty cool. Obviously, uh, with all the rumors that were going around about Amazon coming out with a console, an Ouya-esque kind of thing, this, this clearly was uh, what that controller was for. This was their answer to it. So I'm sure this game library will get far more extensive as time goes on. The Cave, I've actually heard that this is a pretty popular game. Um, and then you'll see on these, these games are not free. 99 cents or 99 coins. So I'm not really sure what the coin system is here but I'm sure Amazon's thought of something. You can see the prices are pretty cheap though. 99 coins, 99 coins. I think the most expensive one was this one. And that was 499 coins or 499. So I mean, the coin to dollar conversion, you can do the math there and figure it out. All right, then you can also browse by categories. So you've got action, adventure, arcade, board, casino, casual kids, puzzles, racing, role-playing, sports, strategy. Lots of stuff in here. Role-playing should be interesting. Uh, so, I mean, apparently there are more things on here than then it gives you the initial idea of when you look at the, the main screen, but it's still, it's not a gigantic game library, but that, you know, I don't expect that right out of the gate. I mean, this thing is brand new. So, you know, the graphics look like they're gonna be pretty decent on some of these games. I mean, this is kind of previous gen looking kind of graphic stuff here. So nothing too amazing, more probably for the platformers, puzzle games, things like that. So let's get out of games. Uh, go to video library. I've got one movie in the video library and then it's smashed. So it says I can watch it again. So I own this movie. So let's watch it again. See what happens. 
All right, pretty quick on the load. Um, if I'm gonna jump ahead, let's see what that does. Press and hold to fast forward. All right, so there you go. You get the little bar along the bottom, and then if I hit it, it goes faster. Hit it again, it goes even faster, and then hit play. See how quick it buffers here, and... Just go, please. Very quick. TV, here you go. Now Amazon's gonna try to sell you stuff. So here you can go in and look at all the different shows. So let's say, you know, How I Met Your Mother just ended. So let's say you haven't seen it before and you lived under a rock and you wanna go back and watch the whole thing. So here you go, buy episode one, $2.99. Buy season eight, $39.99. Add to watch list, more ways to watch. Let's get back out of there. Now it'll be interesting. Recently added to Prime, latest TV shows, recommended TV, your TV. Now, I know The Americans is available free if you're a Prime subscriber, and there it is. Next episode available. It's in my TV queue. So if you click on The Americans, it'll take you into the episode list. Very snappy interface. Um, nothing to complain about there. It's got all, you know, both seasons. Look at that, all season one, season two. Um, so again, load times on this. That was extremely fast, and this is all streaming. And it looks like it jumps in right at 1080. I mean, you can jump around. Let's see. I mean, it's really quick. I'm, I'm impressed with the buffer speed here. So on the Amazon video side, everything's nice and quick. All right, top on TV. Top TV on Prime. So I guess here is everything that is on Prime, see the Americans is there again. If you haven't watched this, watch it, by the way. Extremely good. So let's say that you wanted to watch um, Downton Abbey. So here you go, you can buy the episode, buy the season. So what I would like to see, let's see if it's in here. Shop TV for the kids, recommended dramas. All right, what would be nice is if there was a quick way to get to everything that was free with your streaming, but it looks like you're gonna have to go through on the actual Amazon website add what you want to watch to your queue, and then it will show up under your TV shows. Not a huge deal, but you will need to utilize your computer because they doesn't look like at the moment they have a section that's just top free for Prime subscribers or anything like that. Movies, recently added to Prime. Shop new releases, recommended movies, all your usual stuff here. And again, if you want to buy something, you know, it's got the information on it. You can buy it for $19.99. Watch now Amazon Prime. So in this case, I've stumbled upon something that you can watch for free with Amazon Prime. So that's kind of nice. And it looks like I can add it to my watch list since I'm a Prime subscriber. And then if I go back, I'm sure it's in there as well. All right, so back at the home screen. Here we've got everything. So recently added, here's recent, just watch the Americans, it knows that. I just watched Smash, it knows that. Now it's telling me I downloaded these three things. Getting started video, for goodness sakes, don't watch that again. All right, very easy to navigate, very snappy. And then it just gives you a quick breakdown of all of the different things that it knows you might wanna to go to right away. So it's obviously got your most recent activity and then recently added to Prime. And then here you go, here's your app. So let's take a look at, well, here's everything that's already got on it. So I may not have even needed to download <laughs> um, Netflix or Pandora, but let's take a look at Netflix. Now, the question is, how quick will this app be? Because this is not integrated as part of the Amazon experience. This is an outside third-party application. All right, gotta go to the member sign-in. So far, this looks pretty much like your usual and customary. So I gotta put in my email address. So I'm gonna cut here while I do that. All right, so I'm now officially signing into Netflix after putting in my information, policy and terms, or terms of use. Got that. All right, still loading. Definitely not as quick as the Amazon experience. Um, not bad. All right, so we're in to Netflix. I will say the red is really, really red. <laughs> uh, the colors are pretty blown out here in this menu experience compared to what they were on the Amazon menu, but uh, navigation's quick. Everything's loading up pretty fast. So let's go in and uh, let's just, uh, it looks like mud's all over the place on here. So let's see, let's go into my list um, and let's just do some parks and rec i've already got an episode running so this will give us a quick idea of how fast this loads this is the exact same interface actually as the roku gen one was I've seen, does the hospital still have? all yeah, right and as you can see people. it's not in 1080 at the moment so i'm going to let it buffer and see how long that takes 
Okay, so I've been letting this run for about 30 seconds or so, and it looks like it's buffered about as far as it's going to. Quality is not bad. Uh, looks pretty good. Again, this is a 720p television set, so uh, I'm not going to be able to test the full 1080 in here. Netflix is a success. Do you want to exit Netflix? Yes. As you can see, the performance on this thing is really quick. It exited, it, it exited out of that app really, really fast. So again, Pandora. Pandora is going to make me sign in. Let's see what the interface looks like there. All right, so we are into the interface here, and as you can see, uh, my list is set up here, and it remembers everything I've ever entered in. So anytime I've had people over, we've we've you know had some kind of a thing going on. All the presets are still in there from the other device that I used. So let's uh, jump into let's say Fleetwood Mac Radio and see how quickly this loads. All right, so there it is. A little bit of a delay, but. Not too bad. You can do your usual thumbs up, thumbs down. Obviously, thumbs it up. It's Fleetwood Mac Radio. Uh, skipping music. Not the fastest in the world, but not bad. All right, let's take a look here. I downloaded some stuff. Let's take a look at a game. Tap to start. Welcome, racer. Let's review the basics. Let's just skip the tutorial. All right, I have no idea what I'm doing. So, let's just do career, beginner's lock. I don't care, I'm never gonna play this again. Tap to continue. All right, so. Graphics aren't bad. Frame rate's not the most amazing thing in the world. I'm going to guess around 30 frames per second is what it's looking like to me. Alright. I have no idea how to control my vehicle. So this will be kind of embarrassing. Oh, okay. Just, you just used a little circle thing. I mean, so it's not bad. The performance is there. It's not amazing, but, you know, it was free. So that kind of gives you an idea. Load time was quick. All right, let's quit event. All right, how do we get out of here? That seems to be the trickiest thing so far, is just getting out of stuff. All right, home menu. Time played, zero minutes. Press home again to leave the game. Boom. All right, so all in all, it looks like, uh, let's try, ooh, let's try the voice search. Press and hold the microphone and then speak. All right, let's, Get out of there and just try it in another menu. Oh, see, didn't even, I was too quick. Press and hold, then speak after the tone. Watch the Americans. Yes, it did. There it is, all right, so that worked <laughs> surprisingly well. Let's try something a little more complicated. Star Trek, the next generation. Yeah, look at that. Let's see, yeah, that's right there. So uh, it's taking me into movies and TV. Um, it's interesting. It's not taking me into Netflix. So everything that's going to do based on the search is looking like it's going to, yeah, it's going to take you into the Amazon options. So here's where you can buy. So that's interesting. But the voice search did work really well. It just looks like it's, uh, uh, as you would expect, baked into the Amazon ecosystem. So, nice long tour of the first revision of this uh, pretty snappy box, actually. I think Amazon did a good job here, and as long as you're not really tied into HBO, I think you'll, you'll, you'll be happy with this. Now, 99 bucks, like I said, that puts it at the high end of the price spectrum, along with the Roku 3, I believe, the latest Roku, the highest end version of it, and the Apple TV. Now, I will say this is a quad-core processor. The Apple TV is not. This is, uh, in, from how, it's, how it feels to me, this is fast. This is the fastest of anything I've used. I had an Apple TV. This is most definitely snappier. Uh, there is a lot more going on on the interface. It's a little bit more Xbox One-esque than it is, uh, obviously, the Apple interface, which was, uh, the last time I used it, kind of had that bar. I believe they've updated it a little bit since. But $99.99, uh, is it worth the price? It's a solid device. I wouldn't spend the money on the controller. I, I, you know, I don't really see gaming being a big thing for me. 
Uh, but it is very snappy, and I am an Amazon Prime member, so for me, um, I'm not upset with the purchase. I think Amazon could have been a little more aggressive here. Uh, if they would have got this down to $79.99, I think they would have really made a splash. And man, if they could have done $49 or $59, I think uh, this thing would be really, really, really popular. But it is a quad core. It does have the remote with voice recognition, and it is incredibly snappy. And the, the quality that you get off of the Amazon Prime content and just the speed from that was phenomenal. Fastest I've seen, even faster than my computer actually loading up Amazon Prime content. So... That being said, if you're really tied into the Amazon ecosystem, and maybe especially if you have an Amazon uh, Fire uh, tablet, you'll really enjoy this, uh, this box, $99.99. And uh, yeah, I don't really think you'll be too disappointed. All right, well, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't be a stranger. Come back soon.